Hey guys, it's Kayla. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited because this month we are talking about the importance of trusting God. So this week we're going to discuss how important it is for us to be patient and wait on God's timing instead of going ahead of God. And there's an amazing example right here in the Bible in Genesis about Abraham and Sarah and how they kind of sort of were not patient and went ahead of God and ended up causing way more trouble than they probably thought they ever were going to do. So I hope you're excited because I'm super excited to delve right into scripture so we can learn some valuable lessons from the story in Genesis. All right, so let's start at Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 through 5. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but the one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Okay, so let's break this down. So this is God's promise to Abram. His name is Abram before he turned into Abraham. It's complicated. People in the Bible sometimes have two names, especially after like a covenant with God. So this is like the old self. But anyways, so God made a promise to Abram saying that I'm going to give you so many descendants that they're going to be more than the stars of the sky. But Abram is like, hold on a second. I don't have any children. And Abram's pretty old here. He's like, well, I don't have any children. He talked about that guy, Eleazar, who's like his servant. <laughs> and he's like, uh, he's currently the heir since I don't have any kids. And God's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you an heir from your own body. So this is a promise. So we know that God has some serious stuff in store for Abram, but he is going to have a child. That's what God is telling him. He is going to have an heir from his own body. So let's, let's keep that in mind as we go through the rest of the story. So. God gave Abram a promise that he was going to give him a son and many descendants that he couldn't even count them like he could count the stars. So even though that promise was given, Abram and his wife, Sarai, before her name turned into Sarah, were getting a little impatient. So they thought, let's take matters into our own hands. No big deal, right? We'll help God out. So what Sarah did, Abram's wife, or Sarai, Abram's wife, she said, well, hey, look, we still don't have any kids yet, so maybe we can use our Egyptian maidservant. And Sarai was basically saying, I'll give you permission to, you know, impregnate her <laughs> so that we can have a child and fulfill God's promise. So they totally took matters into their own hands, which doesn't make a lot of sense because we heard God's promise before and God said that the child's gonna come from his own body. And if we know about God's character, we know that God's that God honors marriages. He honors that covenant. And when a man and a woman become married, and they essentially become one. So they're one body. So when God said, you will have an heir from your own body, he meant from Abram and Sarai, not from Abram and the maidservant Hagar. So they totally took things into their own hands, which is not something that we should do. We should just be patient and wait on God's timing. So put a pin on that because the plot will thicken. All right, so this is about to turn into a biblical telenovela. So after the maidservant Hagar gets impregnated by Abram, Sarai starts to get annoyed. Even though it was her plan, of course, she is now looking at the maidservant who is impregnated by her husband. So it's getting a little, little sticky here. <laughs> so essentially, Sarai was just so annoyed and despised by Hagar that she kind of like sends her off and is like, just go. So Hagar kind of runs away for a little bit and she actually gets visited by an angel of the Lord. So let's go to Genesis chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. Okay. 
So it says, And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man, his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Okay, so poor Hagar, right? Like this isn't even her fault. She's just following orders. <laughs> And she now has to deal with all this drama and she's just running away. But this is like, I love this part because it shows how faithful God is. And again, none of this is her fault. And God shows up to her and lets her know that A, she's not alone. And even tells her what she's going to name her son. And yeah, just comforted her in that moment. And the name Ishmael actually means God hears. Because God heard Hagar in the wilderness crying her eyes out being like, why did this happen? <laughs> And I just, yeah, I just really love that part because again, it shows God's faithfulness that even when we go and take matters into our own hands, he is still going to be faithful and make sure that everything um, goes the course that it's intended to go, regardless of our meddling. All right, now things start to get really complicated. So many years pass, like almost like 13 years, I'm pretty sure. 13 years pass and Sarah still hadn't had a child yet, okay? So finally, <laughs> God comes to Abram. So this is in Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. Let's get this. Then God said, no, Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget 12 princes and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. Okay, wow. So now you might notice um, after reading this that now their names are Sarah and Abraham. And... This is so cool because think about it. This is like 13 years later and God is finally like, all right, now is the time. This is the time that I had set out. Even though you went and did your own stuff, this is when my plan comes into play. And again, God is faithful and God is saying, although Ishmael was not the chosen one that God had in mind, he's still gonna honor him and bless him because he is a descendant of Abraham. And God made a covenant, which is a promise with Abraham, which is what we talked about in the very first section, right? So God is good. God's like, I'm still going to take care of Ishmael, but finally it's time for Sarah to conceive a boy and his name is going to be Isaac and he is the chosen one. So fast forward a little bit. I love it because Sarah, she just cracks me up. She's like, she's a piece of work <laughs> because she went and caused all this drama, right? And if you go to chapter 18 verse, let's go verse 10 and 11 okay so it says and God is talking to Abraham telling him basically now it's time for Sarah to have this boy so it says Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old well advanced in age and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I have grown old shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh saying, shall I surely bear a child since I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. Um, and then it says the next page. But Sarah denied it saying, I did not laugh for she was afraid. And he said, but you did laugh. Like, she's such a piece of work. Like, here she is over here laughing and doubting God. And God is like, really, is there anything too difficult for me? You're going to have a child. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if we're past the childbearing age. You're going to have a child because I'm God and I can do the impossible. And Sarah laughs. And basically, she gets called out. And she's like, no, I didn't laugh. I don't know. I just found that really fun. All right. So finally, the true heir is born. Isaac is born. And what's really cool is that Isaac named name actually means he laughs because 
Sarah laughed when God told her that she was gonna bear a son and therefore his name is Isaac. I really love that. Just like we talked before, Ishmael's name means God hears because God heard his mother, Hagar, crying. So I just love like finding out what these names mean. So anyways, Isaac is finally born, the true heir, but things start to get a little sticky because let's not forget about Ishmael. The poor kid is like 13 or 14 and he was the only son but of course he was still born from the maidservant, so not like the true, true, true heir. So now the true heir is born. Isaac is born of both Abraham and Sarah. Poor Ishmael is like the, um, what do you call it? Yeah, he's like the child from like outside of the marriage. And Ishmael is kind of mocking Isaac and Sarah just is like over it. She's like, no, they need to go, him and his mother, they need to get out of here. Just think about it. Sarah's like, okay, now I finally have my son from God, like you guys can go, even though she's the one who caused this mess to begin with. And I feel really bad because Abraham felt bad. I mean, think about it. He has to send his son away, his son of like 13 or 14 years, send him away. That's kind of messed up. But if we go to Genesis chapter 21, verse 12, but God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. Wow. So again, God is saying, I'm gonna be faithful. He's basically telling Abraham, listen to your wife. Don't worry, I will take care of Ishmael and his mother and make sure they're good to go. But God is basically saying the original plan was for your seed to be Isaac. So, so we can really see how our meddling and impatience when it comes to God's timing can just create such havoc and create a mess. And a little like history here, which really blew my mind when I first realized it, is that Isaac and Ishmael, essentially this whole feud played out in history because it is now what we see today with the Jewish people versus the Muslims fighting over Jerusalem and Israel. And when you think about it, poor Ishmael was the child that was sent off even though technically he was the firstborn. When you're the firstborn in the family, especially back in these like biblical days, you had the inheritance. So in Ishmael's mind, the inheritance of Israel is his because he was a firstborn. But as we know from the story, that wasn't God's plan. God's plan was for that, you know, the seed to come from Isaac. But now we see if God makes a promise, we just need to be patient and wait on that promise. We shouldn't take matters into our own hands like Sarah and Abraham, because that can have disastrous results, which we're seeing playing out in history today, which is pretty crazy. So again, to sum it all up, we need to be patient and wait on the Lord. When God gives you a promise, just wait. Wait on next direction. Wait for it to come to fruition through God's hands instead of taking matters into our own hands. I urge you all to think about the areas of your life where you trust God, but do you really trust God? You really want things to happen so quickly that you start taking matters into your own hands. And essentially what that's saying is, is we're kind of telling God in a way like, mm, okay, God, like, I don't want to do it your way. I want to do it on my terms or on my time. But we don't know the end from the beginning like God does. God knows everything. And there is a reason why God is taking his time and doing it his way, because he can see all the pieces that fall together outside of ourselves and outside, outside of our life. There's a reason why God has you in the place that you're in. There's a reason why you're in the season that you're in. God knows your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. And if you are communing with him and building a relationship with him, he is going to honor you and bless you. You just have to trust him. You have to have faith, even when things don't look like anything's happening. Just like we saw with Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. They had to wait like 14 years for it to happen from God's initial promise. That's crazy. Could you wait that long? Think about it. Ask yourself. I have to be honest with myself. I'm not the most patient person. So I really urge us all to learn from this story and learn what it means 
to trust God. And that means being patient in the waiting, not taking matters into our own hands and praying to God and saying to him, listen, I don't know what you're doing or when you're gonna do it, but I trust you, I put my faith in you. I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna do things in my own way and take matters into my own hands. I'm giving it to you and I'm surrendering. And that is really when you can say you trust God. All right, guys, I'm super excited. I love being able to share these amazing stories in the Bible with all of you because there's so much that we can learn in those stories. So tune in because we're going to continue this topic of trust. And we have two more weeks left of the month, which is absolutely crazy. But we're going to continue going on this little train together so that by the end of this month, we can truly understand what it means to trust God and what happens when we don't trust in God so that we can build on this and be more faithful servants to God the Father. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends, and stay tuned for the next video I will post next week. All right, peace and blessings, everyone.